to give stuff away. Alan Cox gives stuff away. If you're a fan of Theory of a Dead Man, they are doing an unplugged tour. And uh, they're going to come to play the Akron Civic Theater on Sunday, November the 3rd. Ticketmaster.com has got all the details for you. Tickets, info, all that. Car 10, this pair is for you. Theory of a Dead Man. Unplugged. It's the, well, you know, when bands do these, it's they want to prove to you uh, they really know what they're doing. This is their chance. Car 10, 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Clevelanders are damn proud of their city. Cleveland! But come on, you were born here. He moved here. This is a man that has endured real torture in a foreign setting. So who's the real hero? I would hope people would listen to our heroes. Alan Cox. On 100.7 WMMS. reading about a break dancer some guy in belgium or he's danish or something a guy who's been a break dancer for most of his adult life and he got a, a tumor in his head from spinning on his head they call it it's called a head spin hole oh a danish break dancer his signature move the head spin you know maybe when we, everybody was making fun of that woman in the Paris Olympics, that girl who... Ray Gunn. Who, Ray Gunn. Ray yeah. Gunn uh, maybe she was touched in the head from all that spinning. Danish break dancer went to the doctor and uh, discovered that his head spin had caused a tumor on his scalp. They said it was benign, but that's where it came from. You know, that's... that's crazy. Any break dancer who's worth their salt, that's your signature move. You know, you can make up your own whatever else... But at some point, uh, you want to be playing with the big dogs, you have to spin on your head. After 20 years of perfecting his head spins, uh, this guy, the doctors told him he had uh, what is known in the breakdancing community as a head spin hole, a condition that begins with hair loss. So you give yourself a bald spot, but can eventually lead to serious scalp damage. So this George guy is getting a tumor. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy developed an inch thick tumor on the top of his head. Now the constant pressure on his scalp. Boy, you've got to hand it to people who have devoted their lives to something um, utterly mundane. I mean, it requires skill, obviously. But I, I, I mean. It, it's only so think, far. It's only so far you can go and break dancing, right? I don't you gotta, think mundane is the right word. I, when I think of mundane, I think of like data. I was being kind. I was going to say meaningless, but it means something to him. <laughs> uh, it's only now in the Olympics, and of course, everybody's laughing about it being in the Olympics. But you know, this guy—he's a young man. I mean, he's been break dancing since he was a teen. He's only in his early thirties now, and it is benign. So it's not like the, you know they got a. This take is, a big chunk out of his scalp, but it is pretty wild. This is going to be a great story. They can make a movie out of this. You dance so hard you gave yourself a tumor, and then you get it removed, and then you keep on dancing. Never stop. Never give up. It, it never stop spinning. Mm -hmm. This guy, uh, his head was literally spinning, and he goes, I'm not changing any. You know, I would think that you'd wear like a beanie or something, right? Nobody says you got to do it bald. Maybe this guy, he's like, he's a purist. I've got to do it raw. My head has got to be on the cardboard. But, yeah, he got like a big old bump on his head. And uh, I don't know if they do anything about it because, again, this is not, it's not unprecedented. I'm sure there are other dudes who have it. Here, I'll, I'll show it. you the... A picture here, the top of this guy's head. That's what that is. Is his uh, head spin hole? There's the top of his skull. Ooh. A non-cancerous tumor caused by years of break dancing on the very top of his head, right? Because you can't spin on your head anywhere else. If you could spin on the side of your head, 
That would be uh, just fine. Well, the good news is he can put on that Lego person hair and it'll stay on. <laughs> That'd be perfect. <laughs> like if you're watching the Netflix version of the Menendez brothers. Not the, They have two things running concurrently. They have the documentary on Netflix of the Menendez brothers. And then they have the fictionalized version, the Ryan Murphy version. And Javier Bardem is the dad and these two dudes that I've never seen in anything else. But they're probably in some show I don't watch. Um, playing the Menendez brothers. And one of them, Eric Menendez... Um, I don't ever remember it being mentioned at the time. That case is over 30 years ago. But his hair was a piece, and it snapped onto his skull or hooked in. That was like the height of hair replacement technology in the late 80s was it would just hook onto your scalp. And then you had, like, glue that would keep the edges on. And it was a system. A si it was a hair system. Mm -hmm. I thought I remembered a snap-on system, too, for some people who really wanted to get into it, where they would, you know, subdermally put in, you know, snaps, and you'd snap your hair on. But there's a, an initial scene where somebody at school is teasing him, and they pull his hair off, mm. and he looks like George Costanza. Otherwise, a good-looking dude, but I was like, what? because when you see them now in their mugshots, Eric is bald, and the other guy's got, Lyle's got some hair. But I thought maybe he just shaved his head in the joint. Those guys have been in there for a long time. And, um, but yeah, he was wearing a hairpiece. But he didn't have a breakdancing hole in his head. Why uh, is it called a hole when it's a bump? It's called a head spin hole. But why? I don't know. Just to put it's a not a hole. Just to put. <sighs> A period on the Admiral uh, Admiral Levine <laughs> at the <laughs> Avril Levine. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. I heard from Dan, who is our uh, bureau chief there in Pyeongtaek, South Korea. Very early there, it's raining. He's walking his dogs, and he said, "Google Admiral Levine," and Rachel Levine. Anybody remember this? No. She is the first transgender four-star officer in oh. any of the United States services. She was, I think during COVID, she was the health director for the state of Pennsylvania. And then Biden uh, brought her into the administration. She's the assistant secretary for health. But she's the first openly trans officer. And so this was a big deal at the time. So Admiral Levine is who they were talking about. So she was probably there. She was probably there. I'm going to look her up, see if I recognize her face. Admiral Mer I don't know how to spell that word. Rachel Levine, Levine. is her name from Wakefield, Mass. And, um, yeah, so a few years ago they made a big, big deal about this. She doesn't look familiar. That she was the first um, a transgender four-star, four uh, whatchamacallit. But she was there when you were there. That explains the military detail. How do you know she was there? Well, they said this is Admiral Levine's suitcase, no, right? They said Avril Levine. <laughs> okay. But what you heard them say was that's her suitcase, right? Yes. Yeah, that's her luggage. Yeah. Speaking of Massachusetts, a town in Massachusetts uh, called Hanson. Yeah. They've sent a cease and desist letter to a guy who owns a pro piece of property that has a water tower on it because he projected a giant Trump 2024 sign on the back, on the side of the municipal water tower. <laughs> and the town uh, did not like that. They said, this makes it look like the town is sanctioning it. It's on our water tower. Right. This guy had a giant projection of Trump 2020. Now, again, remember, it is not a cult. It's very important to maintain that small detail in your brain. It is not a cult. You just sometimes got to project a giant logo onto a water tower. Hey, Andrew. Uh, one minute. Making dinner. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> hey, Alan. How are you? Uh, oh, I'm doing great. Uh, I, oh, so I've never called you guys before until today. Yeah. 
And I just wanted to say that it's awesome talking to you guys. I love the show. I love listening to you guys. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And at, at, uh, the same also goes for um, Rover's Morning Glory. I love listening to both your guys' shows every morning and every evening. I want people when listening I'm all day. I don't ever want people turning this station off. <laughs> um, I'm serious. Yeah, I just want to say, like, I love you guys. I love listening to the show. Um, I, I, I will say uh, it, it does suck that Pound Cake's not on the show. Um, I mean, I... What was it like a month or two ago? He he was on the show f- for a couple of days, and then then he's like not on the show or something like that. It's probably a best um, of. I was probably running I a couple of days of best of shows. That it, it is understandably confusing to people. Oh, okay. I was talking to somebody at one of the Cox. Uh, uh, we did the Cox out pregame yesterday at um, Lakewood Truck Park, and this woman was chatting me up and, oh my god, I thought he's back. I go, no, I just uh-huh. aired a best of. I got fifteen years of clips. So, well, twelve. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, when he had when uh, uh, Pound Cake had said on the radio that he's from Oberlin, I was like, no freaking way! My aunt, uncle, and their kids Frickin- live in Oberlin, and I'm there like almost like once or twice a month. Well, maybe you'll uh, so, maybe you'll run into his mom. She's not there anymore. Uh, oh, um, she's there. She's in the oh, right, right. Okay. Um, oh, well, thank you, uh, Mary Santora. You there? What up? Hey, I just want to say it's awesome listening to you. Um, it, it sucks that you're out in New York, but I'm sure you're having a great time out there. Thank you. I've never been out there myself, um, but like, I hope that it feels like you're enjoying it. Uh, my younger brother, he's in the Air Force, and he's over in Italy right now getting ready to go to Greece, and I know he's having an absolute blast over there. Well, Italy and Greece and New York are pretty much the same places. So. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of uh, cross-cultural... Uh, I'll tell you one thing about New York, Andrew. I know you said you've never been there, but I'll tell you one thing that Mary didn't know. It's very expensive. It's so expensive. Oh, oh, I know it is. I know it is. Right. Okay, listen. New York City. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. You got it. There's Andrew, who, uh, man, he just can't say enough nice things. Got $1,000 here for you, courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. It's your last chance today to win this money, so I hope you do. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Credit. That's credit. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Uh, we were talking earlier in the show about how Brian's getting into shape and mm-hmm. trying to be the best version of himself. Mm-hmm. Of course, Mary didn't like that. Never said that. Uh, <laughs> Literally never said that. Nothing words. will make you feel better, by the way, about how you look. You know, we took our daughter to Cedar Point on Friday, but that night... Because we had been planning to go to Kelly's Island on Saturday. They were doing a bunch of Halloween things there. We 86'd that because the weather was not going to be great. But after Cedar Point, we spent the night at Great Wolf Lodge. Oh, yeah. And I had never been to one of these places before. You've never been to an indoor water park? No. Oh, yeah. And so... You're a... You're a- Greek god, brother, at an indoor water. I Everybody really is. was. Everybody I is. really was. Well, I because I had take I, I had tried to set myself up for success because I knew what I was going to be up against. So I had an edible and I ended up having a margarita. They thank Christ they have a bar at this thing, right? And um, but that's one of those places. And again, I'm not going to be in a stick in the mud because, uh, you know, my daughter's going to have a great time. And we had some friends there and their kids and, and it was just fine. And we can jump back and forth between the pool and the slides and the hot tub. So it's fine. But I had never been there before. Something like that. Not exactly going to be my cup of tea. So I had to really recalibrate my brain when we got there because it's just a place that is crawling with children who don't know where they're going. And I was like ready to jump off the roof. I finally, you know, eased into it and figured it out and it was fine. And, and, um, it was a good time, but that is, that's an environment that, um, 
took me a little bit to get used to. But I'll tell you what, walking around, to your point, man, I felt good. Oh, every time. I felt great. Also, any beach. Dude, you go anywhere in public where people are in swimsuits and you realize... I'm doing all right. Well, but at a beach, you're more likely to see somebody who's really like, and you know. Yeah, one, and it's the well, life. Yeah, life. but the, well, no, I mean, somebody. There's people walking around who, you know, they're not letting it all go. But man, there's people letting it go. And they're having. They were had it. They were we probably had it. They were probably having more fun <laughs> than anybody, right? They're like, oh, hey, yeah. man, I'm let. I don't care. I'm letting my freak flag fly. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, pretty. That's a wild scene, man. And I guess that's a chain. Yeah, they're everywhere. Okay, I had I never have... been. I'd heard of it. I think I. I don't even think I really realized what it was. But um, I had never been before this weekend. My niece did her birthday party there like four years in a row, and she's born in February. She's born a couple days before your daughter mm-hmm. or after. And um, every single time I get sick. I've never been to an indoor water park and not had the flu or a cold or pink eye or something disgusting. That's outdoors. what I was worried about, too. And I just told my sister. For, for our kid, not for me. But I told my sister and my niece, I was like, hey, guys, I'm not coming anymore. I get I get the flu every single time we go here. Yeah. And I'm not. I'm not. It's a Petri dish. This place is disgusting. Well, that on top of like your skin's dry and your eyes are burning from chlorine for the next 48 hours. And yeah. so, you know, but yeah, the law of diminishing returns. But. And there's kids up early because, you know, in the lobby they're doing like yoga or something. And so these parents, you know, God bless these parents that I don't know why they do it or how they do it or whatever. But there were parents walking around with like four small children. And I'm like, wow, you really like have to have every T crossed, I dotted, you know. No, no. Well, they, I don't think so. the people I, think I saw look like they let did. Them go. Uh, the people I saw, I mean, the, the the couple of people. Now, mind you, they look like they were their heads were ready to explode. But you know, you do things for your kids. Everybody does things for their kids. Uh, but you know, we have one kid, and she's eight, right? Yeah. I mean, she she knows what's up. She run around. Uh, this one couple I saw, they had four little kids. And I'm like, man, how two, little? I'm like, two of them are diapers? not even gonna remember this, huh? Like diapers, little? Like no, no, no. Two? Like, like it looked like four kids under six. Dang. I'm like, no. So they weren't zygotes, but I mean, like they, you know, they're oof, running around and, but pretty wild. See, I don't know. Maybe it's the hillbilly in us. It's probably the hill, but that's usually what it comes down to. But when we would go to places like that, our parents didn't watch us. They were like, don't drown, there's lifeguards. And if don't go with anybody you don't know. Well, and that's what fun. that's what Gwen always describes to me. She and her brother, because when she and her parents would go places like a cruise or something or anywhere, they go, dad was off doing something. He'd like make a beeline for the casino or whatever. And they'd be with their mom and their mommy. And she's like, when we would go on cruises... And her dad's like a financial analyst or broker or something, so the companies used to take all their people on cruises. So they went on a bunch of them when they were kids. She goes, our parents would leave in the morning and say, meet us back here for dinner. Yeah. She's like, you're not going to go anywhere. You're on a cruise. Right. But I'm like, well, we never went anywhere. So I never had a situation where my parents were like, oh, have fun. We'll meet you later on. I mean, we never went anywhere. So I even mean like the pool, like the public pool. My parents would drop us off. And be like, don't leave. We'll be back at four. Do not leave this pool. We right. will pick you up back here at four. Yeah. Like that was, and they would just figure it out. You know what I mean? And so like Brian, again, has one daughter. She's also eight. We would go to the pool and he'd be like, oh, I don't want to play. I don't want to do this. I, don't want. I was like, there are other kids there. She can play with another kid. You don't have to be in the pool 24-7 hanging out with her. Like you can relax. She'll figure it out. He was, you know, he's a little bit more of a. Not full helicopter parent, but he's not on the side of just let him go run, you know. But I don't know. I feel like as long as they understand I'm not supposed to go anywhere, I can't, like, don't, obviously don't get stolen. But you know what I mean? Like, don't, don't leave. <laughs> right. With it's not usually up to the kids. But that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> don't leave this area. I'll be right over there in that chair. Do not leave this area. If you want to go somewhere, come get me first, you know. Yeah. yeah, when my kids were younger, I'd usually be in the pool playing with them, uh, but you know, you get bored of that, or they they the 
they sh- show up with friends or something. They want to go off and do their own thing. And usually it's in an area where you can still kind of spot them anywhere in there. Even like a place like Great Wolf Lodge or something, you can usually just kind of do a scan and be like, okay, they're over there. Keep if you're lucky, there's yeah. a lot of people, boy. I mean, trying to scan the horizon and figure out where a kid is. Well, I make them wear those hats with the propellers on the top so that <laughs> well, I there can you go. pick them out. It's my kid over there with the yeah. dumb beanie on. The it's, nerd uh, getting bullied. Yeah. <laughs> nice propeller hat. Uh, I got a break here. You want to send a text? 35192 Guardians Baseball tonight. Uh, first against the Yankees here on MMS. Your pregame will get.